Hey guys, this is Joshua Wanpakim. Before I start this episode, I wanted to let you know that this will be a very difficult topic for many students who are not in an intermediate level in music theory. The reason of a difficult topic is that one of our fans on YouTube has been suggested me to lecture this on this program, Parkham Lectures. This program has made for education and entertainment, so for people who are here for entertainment, my apologies for lecturing a very difficult topic. For people who are here for education, again, apologies for presenting very shocking comedic gestures. It is a show made an education program in a genre of comedy. Otherwise, please enjoy this video, and as always, take care. Greetings, Mr. Kim. It's Mr. Park Kim. Do you think you will ever do harmony or theory videos? Okay, my name is Joshua Park Kim, and welcome to Park Kim Lectures, where anybody can ask any topic you want me to talk about in this lecture. So today's lecture is going to be about the basics of music harmonization. Hit the intro. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Pause, 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 pause. I know for sure there's some people out there who are watching my lectures but ain't subscribed. Really? Seriously? Listen, I would appreciate a lot if you at least give me a subscription. I'm nearly there to get 100 subscribers. At 93, seriously? I know some of you guys are watching my lectures and not subscribed. Therefore, push the subscribe button right now. Alright, back to the video. My name is Joshua and welcome to the What is harmony? Harmony is when you combine two or three notes together. Harmonization. That's harmony. Oh, Stop! Seriously, leaving in the middle of my lecture. I didn't even start it yet. These are the intervals. Major second, major third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth, major sixth, and major seventh. Wait, I never learned that before. You haven't learned this before? That's okay. Major second has one turn. Major second has two turns. Perfect fourth has two turns and one semitone. Because this is one semitone, so this is basically two turns and one semitone. Perfect fifth has three turns and one semitone. Major sixth has four turns and one semitone. Major seventh has five turns and one semitone. I couldn't even read my own handwriting. Key signatures are showing how many sharps and how many flats there are in the music composition. C major and A minor has no sharps and no flats. The sharps are G major, D major, A major, E major, and B major, along with F sharp major. And flats are F major, B flat major, E flat major, A flat major, D flat major, G flat major. Bro, slow down! I can't catch up every single word that you tell me! Don't tell me to slow down. What? I said, don't tell me to slow down. If you find this too difficult for you to understand, like, at least watch a second and a third lecture instead. Okay. Oh, come on. These normal numerals describe the damn scale degree. This is way too easy for me to explain, but it is gonna be very complicated, so you must listen very carefully. I'm out, my llama's gonna take over. I'm quitting lectures. You awake? Well, let's get this started. Try it when you play three notes combined. We just have a C major triad right here. C major triad. C is a major third, E and G is a minor third. 
In the C and the E distance, we have two tones and no semitone. That's how this creates a major third. In the E and the G distance, it's basically a minor third because there is one semitone. Usually, when there's a semitone in a third distance, we call this a minor third. We have one semitone and one tone. So this together becomes a C major chord. In the C minor chord, we have to flatten the third note. And the top two notes are in the distance of a major third. So C and E flat is in the minor third. E flat and G is in the major third. This becomes a minor triad. But at the moment, I'm going to talk about a major triad. Clearly, one more time. C, E, G. C, E is a major third, E, G is a minor third, and a minor triad. C, E flat is a minor third, and an E flat, G is a major third. Let's draw a stay right here, and we should make a C major scale first. Now, what does a C major scale look like? But it looks like a bitch, so why don't we put some triads on it? Now that looks sexy. And you definitely need a name for each of these babies. What do we call them? I know, we should call this baby I, then this baby I I, then this baby I I I, and this baby I I I I I, and this baby I I I I I I I, and this baby I I I I I I Okay, it's not eyes, it's called one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's numbers, it's Roman numerals, we don't call I I I I I I I I I really 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 hate this, because I'm all about the orders and the tea. However, I want you to remember the most sexiest name ever. Supertonic, medium, sharp, dominant, dominant, sharp, medium, and the leading note. Alright, now this chapter will be the difficult part. So get your pen and paper ready. Quite possibly you might need a drink to refresh yourself. So, bring your water, or tea, or coffee, or an energy drink, and listen with full concentration. But, right now, I'll give you a 5 second break, so here is a clip of me eating egg plums. First, I want to call out all the names of the positions. Root position, first inversion, and second inversion. Position is when you change the shape of your body. Root position is a normal position, that's how I like to call it. And the first note at the bottom, right here, if I put that right up there, we call this the first inversion. But if I put the bottom note right here, and I put it right above right here, we call this the second inversion. For example, a C major try. C, E, G. It's a root position. If I put the C right at the top right here, we call this the first inversion. It's going to be E, G, C. In the second inversion, I have to put this E right at the top above the C, and it becomes G, C, E. And that becomes the second inversion. Root position is 5, 3, 1. First inversion is 6, 3, 1. And the second inversion is 6, 4, 1. Now, here's a reason why. You see this C major triad right here? The bottom note right here, it's going to be 1. As always, the bottom note right here is 1. And if we count 1, 2, 3, or 5. So it's going to be 5, 3. Ignore the 1, it's just going to be 5 and 3. But for first inversion, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, or 5, 6. But for second inversion, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ignore all the ones, and we just call it 5, 3, 6, 3, and 6, 4. And that's how we symbolize these inversions and positions. So this is a scale with Roman numerals. It's basically tonic, supertonic, medium, subdominant, dominant, some medium, leading note, and tonic. And this is all in root positions. Therefore, if I raise that bottom note right at the top like this, it's going to be all in this numbers, but it's going to be symbolizing as 6, 3, or just a normal 6. And then, if I put the bottom note at the top like this, it's going to change it to 6, 4. So this is how you symbolize when it comes to harmony, inversions, and positions.
thank you, Nick B, for your suggestion. And we do theory lectures. Check out the playlist where I do theory lectures. Just like Nick here, if you disagree or if you have any other topics that you want me to talk about, leave a comment down below. Then I will see you in the next lecture. My name is Joshua Wan Parkim, and as always, take care.